Hello and welcome. This time, front view. Okay, maybe a little bit, little bit unusual for these videos, but ah, I want to show you something on my screen. Yeah. Uh, last time we talked about stability. Yeah. Remember this one. Yeah. This we have seen with the Nyquist point here, and we said, okay, there are stable systems which are below the Nyquist point, we have instable systems which are surround to surround the Nyquist point, yeah. and there is the amplitude reserve and the phase reserve. Last video. Okay. What a Nyquist plot is, we also, there's also one video. We made this one. Yeah. This was the Nyquist plot of a PT1 element. The plot and the nucleus plot of a PT1 element. This is where we want to start our new video. We want to have analyze what dead time elements do have an effect. Okay. What effect does a dead time element have on our stability issues or on our stability? I've prepared here something for you. I'm going to show you. So here. This is a PT1 element. Yeah. Pretty much the same like this here, but a little bit with different parameters. Here we had 3 and I'm not sure t was 0 0.1. So if I put it to 3 and t 0 0.1, it looks exactly like we've drawn here. Okay, This is exactly the same. Uh, there you see already, if I change the amplification, the k factor, to 8, then it's just shifted up and down. And if I change to t, the t will shift left, right, here to 1, yeah. enter, left, right, the characteristic frequency here. Yeah. Let's use this one, 4 and 8. Let's have a look on the nucleus plot. Here we do have the nucleus plot, and here we see the nucleus point. And here we see we are far, far away from the nucleus point. We are not surrounding it whatsoever. Uh, we have a phase reserve of over 90 degree, very much. And here you see we start at k. This is frequency zero. Then at the characteristic frequency. We are exactly here, yeah, at minus 45 degree. And then at the unlimited infinity frequency, we are here. We, we get closer to, to minus 90, yeah, closer to minus 90, and always shorter, shorter, shorter. This is the nucleus plot of a PT1 element. Yeah. If I change, just for test reasons, also the K here, you see it's not going to 4 like before, it's going to 3 only. This is how it looks like. No, now, no. <laughs> now I'm going to add a uh, dead time element. Book. There it is. Currently our dead time element, dead time element does have uh, zero dead time. So basically it's a proportional element with uh, k1. It does simply nothing. Okay? So we also do not see any change. But let's start with one second dead time. Okay? Please look especially here on the face. Yeah? Here we will you notice for sure some difference. Pick. Aha! You see? In the absolute value, there's no difference at all. It will not, it simply not change the absolute value. What is changed is here, this is the phase of the dead time element, this orange, kind of orange thing. Yeah? It is growing to infinity. This yellow line here was the phase of the PT1 element. And this green line here is the total, yeah? is both combined. Here yellow and green are overlapping because in absolute value there's no difference. 
Now let's have a look. Now let's have a look what it means on the body plot. Uh, the body plot here, this is not yellow anymore for whatever reason. I'm not sure why this is always changing, but okay. I accept. I cannot even change. Ah, I will do it later. Now we have it. Yellow. This yellow line was the original original line for the PT1 element. Okay. This green line is the total. Okay. What is happening there? For instance, where we had 45 degrees, you see we have now a little bit more minus, less. We had minus 45 and now we have minus 45.5. Yeah? This means this point is traveling a little bit to the left here. Yeah? This point stays the same and every point here is traveling a little bit further in, in a phase. What is resulting in this slightly bigger green line. We do not exactly see, but this here in the end, it looks a little bit like a pigtail. It will always surround here the zero point and getting shorter and shorter, spiral. Okay. Let's have a look at it at T5. Five seconds time loss. Ah, there we see it already a little bit better. Okay. And we see also the phase reserve is dropping. The phase reserve will get less. Here, the original phase reserve was above 90 degree. Now we are below 90 degree. We are at, I don't know, 85. Still enough, still enough. But here we see this behavior. And also here we see what was before minus 45 is now minus 50. So this point traveled somewhere to here. Okay. But the absolute value stays the same. So it's like if you put in here a circle and move it a little bit to more angle. Let's make it even worse. Let's say 20 seconds. You see, it's simply sooner adding more and more phase. This is what this delay time is doing. And here, ooh, we are already very close. We are already very close to the Nyquist point, but should be still stable. But it will already swing a little bit, yeah, because the, ampli the phase reserve is not very high and the amplitude reserve is even lower. Yeah. Hmm. Looks already mm, not as good as before. Yeah. Now let's use 40. And here we've got it now. Yay, 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 yay. Okay. We are surrounding the Nyquist point. Now suddenly we are instable. We're using a plain PT1 element and just because of this cannot be stable at all. Yeah? Just because of the dead time, this PT1 element got instable. Yeah? And this is very fast. Yeah? This can react very fast. If you have dead times in a control loop, this is the worst thing. Words, the worst thing which can happen is our dead times. You do something, imagine you do something, you change something, but you do not see it. Yeah? And only after a while you see it, but then you have for sure overreacted already a little bit. Yeah? This is exactly what this is showing. So this is what dead time is doing, adding extra phase yeah. to an extent where we even surround the nucleus point and then we're gone okay and this is i mean this is with pt1 element yeah. let's have a look on a pt2 element so i will again switch the dead time to zero i will then use the pt2 element instead i will get rid of the pt1 element 
and the sum I will do from PT2 and that time, then we should see it how this is looking. Let's have a look. Okay. Yeah. This is PT2 element now. Yeah. What, what parameters do we have? We have a damping of 0 0.7, we have a natural uh, circular frequency of 1 per second, and we have a K of 2. This is our PT2 element looking like this. This is the phase going from 0 to minus 180. How does the Nyquist plot look like? Like this. Looks nice. Here we start already at a phase reserve of, I would say, I don't know, 70, 70 degrees or something like this. Here we have 70 degrees between where I reach 1, absolute value of 1, and, and minus one. So let's here also add some dead time. Yeah? Let's use here one second. Here we see it happens exactly the same. Yeah? Exactly the same is happening. We move it a little bit to the left. It's even, it's rather small, I would say. Yeah? So let's add a little bit more dead time, five. Look. Here also, we see what, what is actually happening here we're simply reaching here the green line is happening this yellow line i will i will also make Ooh, now nah, must be blue please blue and thicker i wanted to make it thicker but the whole line ay 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 and thicker please yeah wohl so so it is our shot this is why I wanted it. This blue line was the original phase. And the green line is now the new phase. And we see we are reaching minus 180 degrees simply sooner. Yeah. We're going up now. Before it was somewhere down here. And now we are reaching it here. Yeah. We see it. We are passing here with the green line now. Even the minus 180 degree. Let's add a little bit more time delay. Getting worse and worse. Yeah? You see, it pretty much looks the same way like the PT1, but we start from already lower uh, reserve values. And this will then get pretty nasty pretty soon. Yeah? Not all systems are reacting equally let's also go to 40 maybe we see a surprise oh this even if we started a little bit later with the same time delay we still seems like we're stable not very stable but uh, we are stable yeah? not very nice yeah but we are stable because we are not surrounding a nucleus plot there you see you cannot just derive from hey i started already here ah this will be it kind of depends on the system, uh, pretty much. But the, the, the problem stays the same. Uh, problem stays the same. For instance, if I now, before, why is this not happening here? Because simply before I had a K of 4. Uh, now let's look what is happening with K4. Woo, we are already surrounding the Nyquist, the Nyquist point. This is the big difference between this PT1 and the PT2. Now, even with 20, where we stayed before stable, ooh, we are very pretty close. We are pretty close. But I think you got it, what is happening. That time adding extra angle, extra phase, and yeah, makes it unstable simply. So even if I repeat myself, dead times are the death to a good control loop. Try to avoid them as good as possible. Not all dead times can be avoided because there needs to be some reaction time of the system and so on. But uh, yeah, keep them short. Help you a lot. Yeah. Now we talked about stability. Next time, we're going to talk about uh, how in the Bode plot a good control loop 
should look like okay and what we can do about it this will then be the next videos control engineering in the Bode plot okay. for this time thank you very much for listening and goodbye